Overhead lines are used extensively in the distribution system in North America and it has several advantages over underground cables among that the low cost and it's much easier to locate and fix any fault in the in the network however there are certain disadvantages and among those these overhead lines are subjected to the external environmental conditions and one of them is lightning so when lightning hit those overhead lines they propagate until they reach some assets like for example the pole mounted transformers here and they can damage them the question is how we can protect those assets especially pole mounted transformers from lightning so please join me in this short video to talk about protection of pole mounted transformers against lightning strikes question how we can protect these pole mounted transformers that we are as we have seen them they are actually connected to the poles and they are vulnerable and subjected to some lightning uh, strikes or surge that can reach reach them and to understand the philosophy of an, of protecting the those transformers against lightning we have to understand that their uh, protection is based on responsibility of both the manufacturer and the utility each party will have their own part that they have to fulfill and with these two roles to integrate it together the role of the manufacturer and the role of the utility this will ensure the safe operation of pole mounted transformers against lightning surge so let's start with the manufacturer when the manufacturer build their transformers, they have to ensure that these transformers should withstand certain impulse voltage level that resembles the lightning strike. And for that, we have a standard waveform we used as per the IEC standard or the IEEE standard with a rise time 1.2 microsecond and a fall time of 50 micro microsecond so usually the manufacturer what they do they show a proof that our transformer can withstand these impulse voltage waveforms by testing their transformer at an independent lab and there are many labs around the globe for example Kima in Europe very well known lab Kinetrix in Canada and so on and so forth so they for every single design not every single unit every single design they have to show that this design has been tested and this test the impulse test is called a type test type test mean you do it only for each design there are some tests called routine tests and some tests called special tests maybe in another video i will talk about the different type of tests for for the transformers but now the impulse test is a type test for every design. So the manufacturer will ensure that my transformers with, can withstand this level of impulse. The question, what is that level? It depends on the rated uh, value of the high voltage of the transformer. So for example, and this is called the basic installation level or BIL for short. For 11 kilovolt transformer, rated value line to line the transformer should pass 75 kv peak value the peak value here this peak value is 75 kv and usually the tested voltages uh, is actually negative polarity not positive polarity for 13.8 kv it has to withstand 95 kv for 33 kV, it has to withstand 175 kV. Now, these are typical values, but from utility to utility, country to country, there could be some, some differences. So, the manufacturer will tell you that my transformer, depending on their high voltage, uh, voltage level, can withstand, and I have a proof that they can withstand this impulse voltage levels. The question is, or the common question is, but how do you ensure that an 11 kilovolt transformer cannot see more than 75 kV impulse? 
or the 13.8 kilovolt transformer cannot see more than 95 kV because you only guarantee that the transformer can withstand an impulse of that level. And all of us know that when lightning hits, we have no control over it. It depends on the initial energy. It depends where it hits. Does it hit close or far away from the transformer? So we have no clue or we have no control over the voltage that will reach the transformer. And here come the utility responsibility. The utility responsibility is to ensure that that the level that reach the transformer and the transformer can see should not be more than their basic insulation level. How they can ensure that? There are two technologies. The first technology, I will call it the old technology or using the arcing horns. And you can see here the arcing horns, basically, uh, it is two parts, one connected to the high voltage. This is this is the uh, first part of the arcing horn. And the second one is connected to the ground. Here is the, the ground. And between the two, there is an air gap with certain distance D. Okay, and this distance is very, very important as we will see. Okay, so if the transformer is hit by a lightning, it reaches it now, uh, far away or close by. So now the transformer start to see this lightning at its terminal. What will happen? Let's take a numerical example. Let's say that I have an 11 kilovolt transformer and the impulse that reaches the transformer was 80 kilovolt which is higher than what is guaranteed by the manufacturer, which is 75 kV. As a manufacturer, I guarantee that the transformer can withstand this level. Now I have more than this. Now here come the role of the arcing horns. This distance D is adjusted so that if the voltage level is exceeding or close to the 75 kV, an arc will establish here between these two parts of the arcing horn and if there is an arc so this part and this part now becomes in series and hence the lightning that hit the transformer it will be diverted from going to the transformer winding through the bushing to the arcing horns here to the ground and this whole energy will be dissipated to the ground and protect the transformer if the, the lightning cycle is say 40 kilovolt which is less than the 75 guaranteed basic insulation level, then when it hits here, the distance is adjusted so that this, there will be no arcing here, so that the arcing can go to the, through the pushing to the winding, but we know that our transformer can withstand this, this level. So nothing will happen to the, to the transformer. So this is the old technology. And as we can see here, it's a very simple, and it's very cheap, very cost effective. However, it has certain issues, certain problems. The first one that, and because of the high energy that is dissipated when, there, when an arc established between these two sides of the arcing horns, this can damage the metallic part because of the very high energy there. And then the arcing horn is not functioning anymore. Also, this is, as you can see, subjected to environmental condition, rust, and this can damage the arcing horns. Uh, sometimes you go to the site because those arcing horns subjected to multiple lightning strikes because of the rust, they almost disappear. You don't even see them in the field. And also because of the environmental condition, there is dust that will start to accumulate and humidity, different levels of humidity. And this will alter the level of the voltage that will cause arcing to take place. Sometimes it would start to take place at a low voltage level at 40 kilovolt, at 30 kilovolt. And this is really bad because uh, this is can trigger some protection systems. So that is not really what you want. You want only this impulse to be diverted when the transformer is not in danger. And even as a matter of fact, sometimes it will start to con uh, to uh, have a connection or the arc can start to establish even at the working voltage level. And this is in some extreme cases, which is really, really bad. So 
in the 80s, 90s, that was the technology. We will decided to move from this to a much better technology, which is the surge uh, arrestor. The surge arrestor basically is a non-linear resistance, and this is the surge arrestor. And again, it's connected in parallel with the bushing. So the high voltage is connected to the high voltage, and this is connected to the ground. So they are connected in parallel. So you have a non-linear resistance in parallel with the bushing of the, of the transformer. Now, this nonlinear resistance, it, because it's nonlinear, it its value will depend on how much voltage will reach the transformer pushing. So, if the voltage level is low, like the rated value or much below that the BI level, this surge arrestor acts like a high impedance, almost an open circuit. So. It doesn't bother the operation of the transformer, just an open circuit, and the transformer will work normally. However, when start the surge arrestor, start to sense high voltage, then it will start to convert to a low impedance, allowing the current to go through the surge arrestor to the ground and protect the transformer. When that voltage level go back to its normal value, then this will go back to the open circuit. There are a couple of materials. The old technology is silicon carbide, and this is not the best technology uh, because this is, as we can see here uh, from this diagram, this is the electric field in the Y axis, and in the X axis is the current density that go through this nonlinear uh, resistance. So even at low voltage level, we have some significant current that goes through this material. But the, the material that we used nowadays, which is zinc oxide, ZNO, as you can see here, at those low voltage levels, the current value is extremely, extremely in the microamp, very small current. Here, it's almost reaching to uh, 0.5 amps, even at low voltage levels. See here, if we compare at the same uh, voltage level, while zinc oxide give me microamps, fraction of a microamp, this give me almost half amp. And this is bad because this will cause heating to the surge arrestor. Uh, so the zinc oxide is the best material. Now when the voltage or the electric field increases, then we start to see more current coming through the material. So it will be diverted. This energy of the current, instead of going through the transformer, it will be diverted through the surge arrestor and to the ground to protect the, the transformer. So this is the standard material now. And if you look around, if you have pole mounted transformers, watch carefully and look to the bushing, you will see those surge arrestors connected in parallel with the, with the transformer bushing, as we can see here in this figure. 